We are due to have our daughter in two weeks and planned ahead of time so I could stay home for a year with her while I'm nursing. We saved around $26,000, plus took into consideration that at his job, he was making $3,000 a month, $23 hourly. Our bills for the year come out to around $46,000. Since we got pregnant, his mom has been super overbearing with the boy mom nonsense. She's been trying to force her way into our lives in ways that I'm not okay with, like trying to convince us to buy a house with her so she can help raise her baby's baby. My husband actually considered this and I shot it down immediately, has been stopping in whenever she feels like it with stuff for him and him only. Like she literally brings him food one serving, only enough for him, around dinner time, probably two to three days a week, saying, I just know you miss mama's cooking. Keeps buying him mom plus son jewelry, knowing he won't wear jewelry and tells me he will wear it. It's a mom and son thing. You wouldn't understand. When I tell her he's not going to wear it, he hasn't worn any of it. She is 100% treating him like he is her husband, calling him to go do things for her all hours of the day, night, and all around just trying to get him out of our house and over to hers. On the off chance that he does go over, she's all like, since you're here, I will let you treat me to a mom and son date at Denny's. Or when she's here, she will look at me and tell me how she takes her coffee and expect me to make it for her. I know I'm rambling, but this woman is batshoot freaking crazy. And no, she was not like this prior to me getting pregnant. They barely spoke before I got pregnant. As soon as she found out we were having a baby, she sunk her claws in with the whole, my baby isn't a baby anymore, nonsense. We are literally in our 30s. So if all else wasn't insane enough, she's been trying to convince my husband for at least three months to quit his job, search and rescue, and go work with her so they can spend more time together. She works at a medical rehab facility. I told him I won't tolerate that for one reason. It's $13 an hour. $10 less an hour than he makes now. I've talked reason with him. Like if he goes there, I will end up having to go back to work because $13 an hour cuts his monthly income in half, just about. And this is not what we agreed to or planned for. Not only that, but her job is bi-weekly pay and doesn't have benefits for a year. He had full benefits at his job. He told me he didn't want to work with his mom and not to worry about it. About two months ago, he said that. But I just found out last night that he did, in fact, quit his job and applied at the place his mom works and bypassed the interview process because mommy vouched for him. So now he has a job with her. I wasn't nice about it when he told me, admittedly. I asked him why the frick he would do that and he goes, well, my mom is getting older and she wanted me to work with her so we can hang out more before she passes. She's literally 61 and healthy. I slept on it and decided I couldn't do this. I told him this morning that I couldn't do this. I'm not going to be overruled by a woman who refuses to stay in her lane. I'm not gonna bow down to a mommy's boy or a woman who grossly won't leave her son alone. He can do it on his own and we can do this separately. I told him I will take the money I saved, $23,000 of the $26,000, and figure it out on my own and that he needs to leave and go back to sucking mommy's tit at her house. He, for whatever reason, is shell-shocked that I'm taking it this far and says I'm an H for not understanding that his mother getting older and wanting to spend time with him should be important. I'm not budging though. He's allowing her to destroy our lives. E-Day. I wanna to touch base on finances real quick for the people commenting being a single mom is going to be great. If he was to leave and we get divorced, my bills would reduce by at least one quarter, if not more. I've been helping him pay off his student loan debt for five years, and the price keeps increasing, so there's no end in sight. With the $23,000 that I saved, I could pay for my home and bills for a year and a half. When I add his bills and his debt to the equation, it won't even cover a year. I'm not afraid of single motherhood. He would be involved regardless if we separate as well. ETA again, he signed a prenup. I owned the house long before we started dating. I withdrew my $23,000 from the bank and put it in my personal. I already spoke to an attorney and I'm in the clear to do so because I have a paper trail on what was mine 
versus what was his. I'm an accountant. Numbers and money are kind of my specialty. I have it all handled, legality-wise. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I think that his decision to quit his job was the death knell. He knew it would have a drastic financial impact on both of you and does nothing to address how his mother has been behaving at all. You're brave for taking the decision you did, in my humble opinion. If he values his core family, he'd make changes right quickly to fix the situation, but I have little faith that he will do so based on his actions. Comment two, not the jerk. Tell him he doesn't come back unless he gets therapy for his mommy issues. Since he no longer has insurance, that may take a while. Sounds like you've been paying for him for too long to become even more of a burden now. Wait until he finds out how far that $13 an hour gets him when he's paying child support. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, back again with an update on the whole situation with my husband and his overbearing mom. It's been three days since I last posted. And let me tell you, things have gone from bad to worse. So after I told my husband that I couldn't deal with his mom's interference and him quitting his job to work with her, he actually left. He packed a bag and went straight to his mom's house. I thought he'd come back, you know, after cooling off, but nope. He's been there ever since, and it's like he's living a whole new life. Now let's rewind a bit to give you some context. Mats, my husband and I met in college. We were both studying hard, dreaming of a future where we could be successful and happy. He was always the more laid back one, while I was the planner, the one who made sure we stayed on track. We balanced each other out, or so I thought. We had our ups and downs, but we always managed to work through them. That is, until his mom started ramping up her antics. Back to the present, I've been trying to wrap my head around everything. I mean, we had a plan. We were supposed to be a team, especially with our daughter on the way. But it's like he just threw all of that out the window. And the heartbreak? It's real. I've been crying more than I'd like to admit. It's not just the betrayal, it's the fear of doing this all alone. But here's the jaw-dropping part. Two days ago, I got a call from a mutual friend who saw my husband out with his mom. They were at a fancy restaurant, laughing and drinking like they were on a date. A date? Can you believe that? It's like he's completely forgotten he's about to be a dad. And then yesterday, I found out that he's been telling people that we're having marital issues because I'm too controlling. That's rich, coming from a guy who's let his mom dictate his entire life. I was so mad, I called him to confront him about it. The conversation was heated, to say the least. He accused me of not understanding his need to be there for his mom, and I accused him of abandoning his responsibilities. It ended with him hanging up on me. Now, let's not forget about the money. Remember how I said I'm an accountant? Well, I've been going over our finances with a fine-tooth comb. Turns out, he's been funneling money to his mom behind my back. Small amounts here and there, but it adds up. I guess that's where some of the student loan payments went. No wonder the debt kept growing. Today, I had to go to the doctor for a checkup, and it was tough going alone. I sat in the waiting room, surrounded by happy couples, and it hit me hard. This isn't how I pictured things. I'm supposed to have my partner by my side, not sitting at home wondering what his mom's next move will be. But here's the kicker, the thing that really got to me. When I got home from the doctor, there was a package on the doorstep. It was from his mom. Inside was a baby onesie that said, Grandma's Little Angel, and a note that read, Can't wait for our new addition. Love, Mom. It was like a slap in the face. She still doesn't get it. She's not the third parent here. So. That's where I'm at, heartbroken, angry, and trying to figure out how to move forward. I've been talking to my lawyer about the next steps, and it looks like this is going to be a long and messy process. But I'm determined to do what's best for my daughter, even if that means doing it without him. As for my husband, I haven't heard from him since our fight. I don't know if he's planning on coming back or if he's content playing house with his mom. Either way, I'm preparing myself for the worst. It's not what I wanted, but I guess sometimes life throws you curveballs. My coworker threatens to tell my wife I called her overweight, so I beat her to it, and she's fine. Now Julia's affair with her trainer has HR on her tail. 
I, 34-year-old male, work in a physically demanding field. My coworkers and I are all fit people without a lot of body type variety. My wife, 32-year-old female, is overweight. The thing is, she's always been overweight. The whole time I've known her, we dated when she was overweight and we got married when she was overweight. She knows she's overweight. She's overweight and she's beautiful. I'm happy if she loses weight and I'm happy if she stays where she is. I think she's the most beautiful woman in the world as is. One of my coworkers, Julia, 28-year-old female, started complaining that she's too fat to be loved and overweight people don't get to be loved. Julia isn't overweight. She's maybe, maybe 120 pounds. She works out five times a week and barely ever eats. I told her that wasn't true and that my wife was overweight. She got really red in the face and started telling me I wasn't allowed to call my wife overweight that I was insulting her, and that my wife was beautiful and curvy. Carol doesn't like being called curvy. She thinks it's a label used to avoid calling people overweight because it's a dirty word to most people. I told Julia as much. Julia started threatening to tell my wife I called her overweight. She pulled up her Instagram and told me she was messaging Carol that I was being mean. I beat her to the punch and called my wife put her on speaker and asked if she was curvy or overweight. Carol laughed and said, I hate that curvy shoot, overweight and beautiful baby. I thanked her, told her I loved her and hung up. As soon as I hit end, Julia went mental. She started screaming that I was harassing my wife. When I asked how, she said I was clearly brainwashing her into accepting the term overweight to try to keep her complacent and from getting away from me that no woman in her right mind could be okay with their husband calling them overweight. I showed her a picture of my wife in a shirt that had BBW, Big Beautiful Woman, on it. She bought it for herself, by the way. She stormed off and hasn't spoken to me since. Now, I just walked in today to an email from HR requesting a meeting with me. I don't think it's a big deal. I have my wife's blog for fat positivity, the shirt, and can easily call her for proof. But now... Things are frigid at work, and Julia constantly gives me dirty looks when we're in the same room. She ignores me otherwise. So I'm just over here, scratching my head. Am I the jerk for calling my wife overweight? Edit, update. So I met with HR at four today. Apparently, multiple coworkers who had overheard the conversation stopped by HR throughout the day to give their side weigh in. I wasn't in trouble, they just wanted my side of things. It checked out with what everyone else had said too. I still don't know which of my crew stopped by, but I owe them my life. I offered to show my wife's blog, and our representative, who's a really nice girl, told me that if it didn't affect my work, it was irrelevant. The story had been corroborated enough by others. HR reiterated a lot of what y'all said. Even though Julia initiated the conversation, I shouldn't have jumped in. It was less of a scolding, and more of a request to keep my nose out of other people's business. I'm sad because I thought Julia and I were friends. We talked about our mental health struggles, the hardships of the field we're in, and heavy things like that. Won't be having those conversations any further. Julia and I will no longer be paired on teams for patient care. I was told my part in the investigation was done and they thanked me for my time. So, I think I'm going to be okay. Before I left, I told HR that if weight loss, body image wasn't supposed to be a topic of conversation, they should consider enforcing that on a company level. We have a weight loss challenge. I suggested making it a fitness challenge instead. She said they'd take it into consideration. So that's it. I wrapped up my treatments. Everything will hopefully shake out. Haven't spoken to Julia, hoping to avoid her for the near future. Thank you all for the sanity check. Now, to quote Clue, I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. Good luck with HR. Fat is not a protected class. Outside of Michigan, you didn't call Julia fat and your wife isn't a co-worker. I'm not a lawyer, but you would probably have a valid suit for wrongful termination should it come to that. You should complain about Julia, though, for creating a toxic work environment. Comment 2. One of my coworkers, Julia, 28 years old, started complaining that she's too far to be loved and fat people don't get to be loved. Julia isn't fat. She's maybe, maybe 120 pounds. Not the idiot twin. 
Perhaps Julia needs to reflect inward because if she's not being loved at 120 pounds, maybe it's her personality that's getting in the way. Now for the update. Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post and I've got quite the update for you all. After the HR meeting, things seemed to settle down a bit. I was relieved, thinking the drama with Julia was finally over. But boy, was I wrong. The next day, I walked into work and found out that Julia had been spreading rumors about me. She was telling people that I was secretly unhappy with my wife's weight and that I was only pretending to support her to look good. Now let me give you some context. Julia and I used to be pretty close. We'd grab drinks after work, vent about our day, and she even helped me pick out a birthday gift for Carol once. But ever since she joined that new gym and got a personal trainer, she's been different, more competitive, more insecure. I guess that's why she took my comment about Carol so personally. Anyway, back to the rumors. I couldn't believe it. I've always been open about my love and admiration for Carol. I've supported her blog, attended fat positivity rallies with her, and I've never once made her feel anything less than beautiful. So hearing these lies about me was a punch in the gut. Carol, being the amazing woman she is, didn't let it get to her. She even joked about it, saying, if you're unhappy with my weight, you sure have a funny way of showing it, what with all the cuddles and kisses. She's always had a way of making light of tough situations. The work atmosphere was tense, to say the least. I tried to keep my head down and focus on my job, but it was hard with Julia's glares burning a hole in the back of my head. I missed the camaraderie with my coworkers, the way we used to joke around and help each other out. Now, it felt like everyone was walking on eggshells. Two days after the rumor started, I was in the break room when I overheard a couple of coworkers whispering. They were talking about Julia and her personal trainer, how they seemed a little too close for comfort. I didn't think much of it at the time, but later that day, I saw Julia and her trainer in a heated argument in the parking lot. It was none of my business, so I walked away. The next day, Julia didn't show up for work. Turns out, she had been caught having an affair with her personal trainer, who was married. The news spread like wildfire, and suddenly, all the rumors about me were forgotten. I felt bad for her, despite everything. No one deserves to have their personal life exposed like that, but that's not even the biggest twist. Remember the HR rep I talked to? Well, she pulled me aside and told me that Julia had been reprimanded for her behavior towards me and that she was on thin ice. If she caused any more trouble, she'd be out of a job. I was shocked. I never wanted Julia to lose her job. I just wanted to clear my name and move on. But it seemed like karma had other plans. As for Carol and me, we're doing better than ever. She's been getting more followers on her blog, and she's even been invited to speak at a body positivity conference next month. I'm so proud of her. Work is slowly getting back to normal. I've had a few coworkers apologize for believing the rumors, and I've forgiven them. We're all human, after all. I'm just looking forward to putting this whole mess behind me and focusing on what's important, my work and my incredible wife. My husband's brother got arrested for a terrible crime and they want my money to save him. I'm torn and just can't believe it. Throw away because my husband has access to my main. He doesn't follow this subreddit. I don't know if I'm thinking clearly. Please help. I just gave birth four days ago to a beautiful baby girl. I'm 29 years old, my husband is 30 years old. Right after we were discharged and got home three nights ago, my husband got a phone call from his father and next thing I know, my husband is losing it. He's on the phone for like 45 minutes, just flipping out, crying, snotting, yelling. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong and he's ignoring me. He goes and gets himself a six pack. He finally opens up to me about what's going on. Apparently his brother, I think 27 years old, I've only met him twice because he lives with their dad out of state, just got arrested for kidnapping. Photos of minor children and having intimacy relations with a young girl a week ago. He wouldn't tell me how old she was. Kept dodging the question. He's been a mess since then. He has barely held our daughter. And when he does, he's just crying. He's not helping me at all. He's just completely shut down. I'm trying to be understanding, but I don't know the depth of what's actually happening at this point. 
because he's not really communicating with me. Well, his mom showed up here at 8 a.m. this morning and woke us all up. He apparently invited her here to talk about what they're going to do. I kind of snapped at one point because I'm asking what's going on and they are straight up ignoring me. So I snapped and said, will someone tell me what the frick is going on right now? And like, his mom brought up the article of the arrest and it says, minor girl aged 12 to 13. She was 12 when it started and is 13 now. So I just kind of clam up because I'm in shock, I think. Well, him and his mom start talking about getting this guy a good lawyer because apparently there was evidence in text IM showing that they were actively in a relationship and she knew what she was doing. They start searching for lawyers right then and there and they start making phone calls to get quotes. Well, my husband just spoke to some lawyer for a free quote and gave the rundown on the situation to this guy and he like blamed the girl basically. Yeah, it's fricked up because this girl knew what she was freaking doing so she's just as much to blame here if not more. I immediately felt sick to my stomach and just went to the bedroom with our daughter and kind of hid out, I guess. But him and his mom just came in here and asked me if I would pay for the lawyer. Apparently the guy he was just on the phone with quoted him $12,000. I have $26,000 in fun money. No real purpose, but I've been saving over the past year. They also said he will need to be bonded out I guess he was seen this morning at 9 a.m., which is why mother-in-law came over today, and his bond is $10,000, $100,000 technically, but I guess you only have to pay 10%. I'm so confused. This is just what they are telling me. I think there was a longer process. This is all happening so fast. I don't want to pay for a lawyer. I don't want to pay this guy's bond. I don't want to be around my husband, who is blaming the girl. I don't want to be around him when he's an emotional train wreck and having no help with our daughter because he's so fricked in the head right now. I don't know if I should wait it out and give him a chance to think more clearly before I jump ship and run for the hills. But everything in my body right now is screaming at me to run. I told him I didn't want to pay for the lawyer or bond. He said he understood, and I think he's trying to guilt me because every time I leave a room, he follows, five minutes later, bawling his eyes out, on the phone with someone saying he's never going to see his brother again and trying to figure out how he's going to come up with the money, i.e., I need to figure something out. He needs that lawyer, and I don't have the money. Or taking tissues from the bathroom and standing in the living room where I am to blow his nose super loud. It feels manipulative. Am I the idiot for wanting to run without telling him and take the baby? I don't know what to do here. If you don't believe this, just please move along. I'm looking for help, not someone saying how fake they think this is, because men don't cry over their brothers being locked up. He has been crying and flipping out since it happened, keeps saying he's gonna get ended the life of in prison, or that he never should have allowed his brother to leave state because none of this would have happened. He's even been watching videos on prison fights and how inmates make weapons because clearly not in the right head and thinks he needs to warn his brother on how to protect himself. ETA again, the money I have is cash and I have it on my body, in my robe, in the zipper. As for why, he's protecting his brother. Not to make excuses here, I think it's survivor's guilt. His brother was abused as a kid and my husband watched it happen but didn't, couldn't stop it. So now everything that happens with his brother and he is overwhelmed with guilt and blaming himself for why his brother is so fricked up. It's a, I couldn't save him then, but I can save him now mentality. My mom, dad, and brother are on their way. Thank you guys. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. Do not give him or his family the money. This is no longer fun money. This is now getting yourself and baby the hell out of their money. You may be needing that money for living expenses. You may also need an attorney yourself. Also, I have a brother that's a predator. If they have solid evidence that the guy messed with a 12-year-old, he's going away for a while anyway, whether you pay for an attorney or not. He might as well sit in a county lockup and get credit for time served. Comment two. 
Is the $26,000 in a joint account with his name on the account? If it is, you want to transfer that money out to an account that's not in his name at a different bank from your joint account. When he's at work, take half of the money in the joint account, pack up all of your valuables and important papers, and head to your mom's. You have a daughter, and your husband thinks it's okay for a grown man to have intimacy with a 12-year-old girl. Seriously, say that out loud. Now for the update. Day one, my mom, dad, and brother arrived, and the tension in the house was thick enough to cut with a knife. My husband, still a mess, tried to explain the situation to them, but my dad cut him off. He's always been a man of few words, but when he speaks, it's straight to the point. We're not funding a criminal defense, he said, and that was that. My husband's face fell, and his mother, who had been a silent force in the corner, finally spoke up. She tried to argue, but my dad wasn't having any of it. I remember when my husband and I first met, he was so different. He was the life of the party, always making everyone laugh. But now, seeing him like this, it's like I don't even know him. It's like those dark family secrets he never talked about are finally catching up to him. Day two. The next morning, my husband's demeanor had shifted. He was quieter, more withdrawn. He spent hours on the phone, pacing back and forth. I overheard bits and pieces of conversations about selling his car, his watch, anything to get the money for his brother's bond. His desperation was palpable, but I couldn't bring myself to feel sorry for him. Not after everything. I took a moment to myself, holding our daughter close. She was oblivious to the chaos, her tiny hand wrapped around my finger. It was a stark contrast to the turmoil around us. I thought about how my husband had once promised to always be there for us, to be a rock. Now here he was, crumbling under the weight of his family's sins. Day three, the final straw came when I caught my husband's mother snooping around our bedroom. She had found my hidden stash of cash and was holding it, her eyes wide with what I can only describe as greed. I confronted her and the argument that followed was explosive. My husband walked in on the tail end, his mother red-faced and shouting about family loyalty. He looked at me, then at the money in his mother's hands, and something in him seemed to break. He told her to leave, his voice barely above a whisper. She left, but not without hurling a few choice words at us both. After she was gone, my husband sat on the edge of our bed, head in his hands. He didn't cry this time, didn't try to follow me when I walked away. I think he finally understood the gravity of what his brother had done and what he had almost allowed himself to become a part of. That night, after a long talk with my family, we decided it was best for me and the baby to stay with them for a while. My husband didn't protest, he just nodded, his eyes hollow. As I packed a bag, I found a photo of us from happier times. I left it on the dresser, a silent reminder of what we had lost. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.